This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Pen. My name is Ricky Widmer, as Mike Rankin is out of town this week, all the way in Florida, said, hey, you know what, Ricky? I'm going to Florida take over the show so i'm here to kind of right the ship and i'm not alone as i'm joined by the one the only brandon swanee swanson what's up what's up and uh yeah thank you for saying that because there's something with me i can't say the what's up what's up when i'm starting the show off i don't know if it's it's just me it's just you it's just me it's just you because walking in here today i said ricky it's okay you can go ahead and say it and you said you couldn't you're just weird it's just uh, it's but that's, weird. I, I picked it up for you that's the only reason i said it is to and pick it up for you. you because and thank you you know you just can't do it and we are here behind the pen we're going to be giving you a good show we're talking about some but fans football, you're probably football you're really football. probably wondering what pen are you behind are you behind a the, the, pen? the pen in baseball the bullpen or are you behind the writing pen? The world may never know because Mike Rankin <laughs> may not tell you. Uh, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to question him later, but we're going to talk some football and then some basketball at the end. Before we get into everything, I got to do the spiel of, if you're listening on YouTube, thank you for joining us. However, if you are on SoundCloud, remember that as of October 1st, we will no longer be on SoundCloud. So make sure to check out blogtalkradio.com backslash most valuable podcast to find all of our podcasts right there on the network page. But Brandon going to be talking, like I said, some NFL, some Roger Goodell having too much power in the maybe suspensions of Matthews Peppers and James Harrison. We're going to dive into the Eagle Titan trade that went on and then some NBA basketball. What's more important, an Olympic gold medal or an NBA title. But let's start with today was an interesting story to me. How this kind of Al Jazeera kind of PED story and how Roger Goodell wants James Harrison and Clay Matthews and Julius Peppers to come to him for an interview or else I'm going to suspend you indefinitely. And all these guys are saying, hey, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to sit here. You, James Harrison has said enough. You can come to me. Like, hey, you guys can bring the interview. Bring Roger along as well. You can come here to Pittsburgh. What's your whole take on this whole situation? Well, my take on the situation is take a look at what happened with Peyton Manning. You know, Al Jazeera also did a report that came out saying that Peyton Manning could be linked to this. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, no, not Peyton, not Peyton. And it turned out that Peyton cooperated. And no, it nothing happened. They were wrong. He didn't do anything. I, I think that these guys really just need to cooperate and be cleared of it because is it is it a pain in the ass absolutely it probably is absolutely but why not just get it over with and mm -hmm. get the season started instead of having a suspension or having something like this lingering over your head for the beginning part of the season why allow that but two roger goodell i mean it's just if you don't come in for for this you could be suspended why he he does have a little too much power he does. I mean, in, in a lot of different aspects. And you talk about a guy who comes down really hard on the players. Who comes down hard on Roger Goodell? Nobody. Nobody came down. I mean, the media. The mm -hmm. media and the fans came down hard on him for the way that he, he handled the Ray Rice situation. And that's just one to talk about that's a big one. But who comes down on him? Where's the accountability for him? There isn't one. Not that I've seen. Out, outside of the media and the fans. Those are always going to be huge things of accountability but it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't go anywhere because we can't put a we can't bring the hammer down on him the media can't bring the hammer down on him in a sense they really can't i think that he's got a little too much power to say if you don't come in you're going to be suspended but at the same time just avoid it all go in do do the interview do the sit down mm -hmm. talk to him say you know what i didn't do this this isn't you know the type of player i am get it all clear clear the air start the season Boom, you're done. And that's the kind of mindset that I'm in. I'm in the majority of if you have nothing to hide, just get it out there. Just say, hey, you know what? I got nothing to hide. Fine, I'll do the interview. And it's this tricky P word called pride is I think what's kind of getting in the way where I look at James Har James Harrison and Clay Matthews are the two that we hear. The big one is James Harrison because he's kind of butted heads the most with Roger Goodell, but 
the kind of analogy that I'm kind of forming in my head when I look at this is it's kind of like that teacher that you had in school. Everyone had that one teacher that couldn't really get a control of the whole classroom, so they just started throwing detentions out left and right. However, when a teacher has someone above them, Roger Goodell doesn't, but they just start throwing out the detentions left or right, and really it's like everyone just gets mad. They have no merit anymore. That's what Goodell is with these suspensions. They're basically detentions, and it's just that student and that teacher kind of butting heads and even it's kind of starting a whole community of us against you because today on the Jim Rome show, Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, was asked about this and he said, and I quote, if that is the case, and the case is Goodell having too much power, if that is the case, we have nobody to blame but ourselves because we had the opportunity in the CBA to make some legitimate changes to that I think there were probably too much pressure to come to a deal when we all had the power on our side, end quote. And that's really it. Like, everybody that I hear whenever, no matter if it's First Take, if it's Fox Sports 1, if it's NFL Network, everyone kind of has the same idea of, well, you guys agreed to this. Like, how many times have I heard, you guys agreed to this? Like, that saying said about this. It's just one of those things where, yeah, Goodell has too much power, but on the other side, you just got to cooperate. Like, to me, I just say you just got to cooperate because I love that you brought up Peyton Manning because what did Peyton Manning do? It came out. He cooperated. It went away. I'm going to use another quarterback as the example of the other side. Tom Brady, Deflategate comes out. He doesn't cooperate. It stays around for two to three years. Or it seemed like forever, basically, that Deflategate stuck around with us. So you see right there between the two most, the two top quarterbacks of our time, one cooperated, it went away right away. We're not talking about it anymore. The other didn't, and we're still talking about it. Absolutely. And that's the whole point, is the fact that I really, really think that there's a lot to be said for just doing what they're asking. Mm -hmm. You know, you can fight about Roger Goodell another day. There's battles that you have to pick and choose. You know, do you really want to battle this out to the bitter end to just not have to go in and do an interview or do a sit down with the league? No, this isn't one of those battles that you want to actually have to go to battle for. You know, you got to pick and choose. And this is one of those battles where I just say, no, I'm not, I am not going to battle it out. I am just going to let it be. You win. I'll come in. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to any investigators, anybody from the league that mm-hmm. wants to know anything about what I have, have not done what I have, have not put in my body, all this stuff. Just let it be because there's going to be an actual battle one day with Roger Goodell. There always will be that you actually will want to go and fight for, and it may go to the bitter end. That's when you that's when you pick it. That's when you go to battle. This is not one of those times. It's just a waste. It's a mm-hmm. waste, and it's, it's, it's a bad cloud to have hovering over your head when it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. Well, and I kind of sit here, and I'm thinking, is there a right side? No. There's not a right side. There's two wrong sides. And I say that because obviously the commissioner is wrong because I believe like the commissioner should have, yeah, if you do something wrong, you should be stern and dish out the appropriate punishment. However, I kind of feel like any leader, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a boss you have at work, whether it's the commissioner of the NFL, should be compassionate towards his players and... I know you're saying, but Ricky, the commissioner's job is not to be on the player's side. It's to be on the other side with the owners, the guys who make him money and the guys that he's supposed to help fill their pockets more of money, if that makes any sense. That's the big divide. And I kind of have a feeling on the other side where you're also wrong because you're trying to butt heads, you're trying to make an issue that, like we said, doesn't need to be there. You could just say, fine, you know what? I didn't do it. Fine. I'm going to come out and just do your interview, go through the formalities, and then it's done and it's over with. Exactly like 
Peyton Manning did. And there's a part of me that fears that when we get to 2020, when the current CBA agreement is up, I kind of feel like that this kind of tension that we've been seeing over the years with the suspensions that are thrown out and players not happy, this could snowball into another holdout. Because I, I could see it exactly going down. Hey, you should have less power. Hey, fuck you. Okay, hold out. That's exactly how I think it'll go down. And that's not what we want. I mean, that's not what anybody wants. I think that maybe that doesn't happen right away. But if it gets to the point where he is having way too much power, and I think people, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of people who would say, well, he's already at that point. But I I think that it could get bad, especially with the Players Association saying, we are done. We're done. We're done with your crap. We're done with your BS, the way that you kind of push us around and stuff like that and make us give in to everything that you want us to do. I think that we possibly could see that again, maybe sooner rather than later. Hopefully not. But I I just think that if Roger Goodell can just be the commissioner, Mm -hmm. just be the commissioner. And I know that it's, it's not the same league, but you look across different leagues, and for the most part, mm-hmm. currently, for the most part, things are okay. If you look at baseball, I don't think that too many people have any p- problems with Manfred. I don't think they have too many problems with him. Well, he does. Manfred doesn't dish out the punishments. It's Joe Torre. Yeah, Joe, Tor- Joe Torre. Doesn't he do the punishments for baseball? Manfred is the commissioner. Commissioner. Yeah. The He's, commissioner doesn't do the punishments in baseball, I thought. But, but the commissioner is the one who ultimately can have the final say. True, true. I Joe, mean, Joe Girardi, Joe Girardi, Joe Torre. Joe Torre is kind of like a, a special assistant to the commissioner. Mm-hmm. So yes, Joe Torre is the one that's coming down with it. But I think that it's Manfred. They all probably are in a room with some lawyers, whoever, and they go, "This is what's going to happen." A- Adam Silver. You know, he's had his good days, he's had his not so great days, but I think that Roger Goodell has his good day, his he has his bad days and his shitty days. Uh, that's not good. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he could get to a point where it's more Adam Silverish, you know, people are loving you, then people are like lukewarm on you, then they're like, "Okay, he's not so bad." That would be all right. I I just don't think that Roger Goodell has a whole lot of respect from the players, and I I, I don't think that Honestly, he really deserves it. Well, and I I think that maybe when we get to the new CBA, that's going to be something that's discussed of, hey, we need somebody to come in here and kind of dish out the punishments because you're not capable of it. There's too much on your plate. We need to get somebody in here who can be that disciplinary person, and it's all going to depend on is Roger Goodell going to say, yeah, I'm fine with it? And someone who's not biased. Someone who's coming in, who's right down the middle, who's not biased via the players, who's not biased via the commissioner's office. Someone who comes in and can look at things in a logical sense, clear-minded, and can make a decision based on the facts. Based on the facts. Not based on what's happened before, not based on this, based on the facts, based on procedure, based on the rule book for that, and then make a decision. That's what I think. Because someone who, you know, I I think someone who's getting suspended four games for, you know, smoking marijuana, you know, isn't, isn't good when someone who, you know, has a domestic violence thing against them, eh, two. You know, it's like, I, I, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I think that when you go back, you have to really kind of review mm-hmm. all the policy, all the rules, because that's not making sense to me. And to kind of wrap this up, I got a quote for you. I'm just going to read you the quote, Brandon, and then we're going to play a game. I want you to tell me I love games. Which, which ESPN personality said this quote today. You ready? Sure. The quote is, so let me send it. Let me send it to you and the rest of the NFL players out there. My name is Roger Goodell. I'm the commissioner. There's a CBA in position that gives me this power. You want to ignore it. It will be at your own peril. I would suspend James Harrison immediately 
just for opening his mouth to say what he said. Because even though he might be right, he's wrong with how he's handling it because he's not appreciating the lack of power he truly has in this equation, end quote. From ESPN. Yeah, from ESPN. I just always go Stephen A. Smith. That was a Stephen A. Smith quote. If, if, first take today. If, if there's if there's a quote and it's ESPN, I just assume Stephen A. Smith. Except he didn't say in this one, now Seth, he's a dear, dear friend of mine. He didn't say dear, dear friend of mine. Oh, but, he's not a dear, dear friend. Wow. But I kind of think that I there's a part of this that's like, yes, I don't agree with the, hey, I'm Roger Goodell. Fuck you. I can do this. I'm going to do it just because. However, I kind of agree with the part where it's, I'd suspend him. I would suspend James Harrison just because I'm going to go back to that teacher analogy I said earlier in the segment. When I was a teacher, kid kid misbehaved, you got to make an example of him or her so that it doesn't spread. Somebody, Somebody misbehaves, boom, you nip it right in the bud. Because if you don't nip that in the bud, it spreads like a cancer through the whole room, especially when you're new. Now, I know Goodell's not new. He's not that first-year teacher in front of the classroom. But still, you got to nip it in the bud. You can't let this get to where Deflategate got to. Yeah, no, I agree. I also think that one thing to to play a little devil's advocate, Goodell could have just come down and said, you're all suspended for four games. There's a little bit of an opportunity right here to say, hey, you've got an, you've got an option. You come in, you speak with well, us, and you probably won't get suspended. That's like probably the thought of most people. That's at mm-hmm. least that's what I when I heard that I'm thinking, okay, if they just go in and talk, they won't get suspended. But if they don't, they're suspended for the first four games. Mm-hmm. So at least there's that option. Now, have they said it was going to be a four game, or have they said I it's be- going to be an indefinite? I've heard n- things where it's going. It might be indefinite. I thought I heard four games. I okay. thought I heard first four games in the in the Clay Matthews from what I was hearing. I can't remember if it was a DP show or first take today. I thought I heard one of them say that it might be an indefinite suspension, but I want to know what you guys think. You guys listening, would you suspend James Harrison? Do you think that Roger Goodell has too much power in the NFL? What do you think about this whole situation?